In this tutorial, we're going to have a look at how we can use Google Forms to create an exam paper. I've already created uh, an exam paper, and uh, this is a copy of AQA Paper 1 uh, from 2018. It's just a fair section covering uh, the challenge of natural hazards. There's a link below to the form so that you can copy this exam paper uh, across to your Google Drive. When you do this, some of the images may not come through. Um, if that's the case, then you'll need to go to the original exam paper, take a screenshot, and then add it to your form. So in this video, we will explore how the form actually works and what we can uh, do, with the, uh, do with the form. So basically, um, we started off uh, in the form with a name field so that the students can add their names in. You can see there's a red asterisk here which means it's a required element of the form. They won't be, the students won't be able to uh, submit the form until that field has been completed. Uh, we've also included a teacher field as well because we might have multiple teachers in their department and again this is a required form. So to start off with we have uh, an image. Uh, I've just taken a screenshot of the um, of figure one from the paper uh, and then I've added that just by selecting the add image option here on the right hand side insert of the image. Now our first question is a multiple choice question so I've just inserted a multiple choice question uh, given all the possible uh, answers and then if we just go to the answer key we can see that we've allocated one point to this question because it's worth one mark and then we've highlighted the correct answer. Now what that will do is uh, the form will automatically mark the answer uh, either correct or incorrect for us. Now that's because the form itself, if I just quickly go up here and show you this, I should have done this earlier really, uh, and click on quizzes. I did make this originally as a form uh, and then if we click here to make this a quiz it then gives us the option to allocate points and things like that to the form. So our next one, uh, next question, uh, 01.2 describe the movement of plates uh, along plate margin X. It's a short answer question. Now what you'll see here is there's a range of different correct answers that I've put into the form. Now if I just go to answer key here are all the possible correct answers. Now, the reason why I've put these in uh, is basically if the students match any of those answers, then one point or one mark will be automatically allocated to the students. Now, I've put quite a number of different scenarios in there, but that could actually save me quite a bit of time uh, when I'm going through and actually manually checking the answers that the students have put. Now, what I haven't selected down here mark all other answers as incorrect because the students might write a similar answer um, without one of the particular words being included. Uh, if I did select mark all other answers as incorrect then they would get zero marks for their answer which is why it's important to go through and manually check these kind of questions but we'll look at manual checking uh, in the next video. So I'll just click done here. Um, again Another resource here, I've uh, just taken a screenshot of the exam paper, inserted an image, and then once again we've got another, we've got another multiple choice question. If it goes to the answer key, again the correct answer is highlighted and I've allocated one point. Now what I have done here is I've added some feedback. So if the student gets the correct answer, a bit of positive feedback there and an explanation of why it's the right answer. If they get the wrong answer, then they will get some feedback explaining what the correct answer is and why. On the next one, we've got a six mark question here. Uh, so I've selected a long answer uh, text. If I click on here and then go to the answer key, what I've done is I've allocated six marks to this and I've provided some feedback for all answers. Okay, I can edit that. Um, and I can also add a link or I could add a, a video explanation uh, in here. Just click save. Now, because it's a six marker, I'm going to have to manually mark this. Okay. However, all students will get this particular generic feedback. 
Okay. In the next video, we'll go on and, and, and we'll have a look at how we can add personalized feedback for individual students. Next question, uh, again, a screenshot added uh, an image and then we've got a multiple choice question again here. Just go to the answer key. You can see that I've highlighted the correct answer and allocated one mark. If I want to, I could add some answer feedback if I click that. So if they get the incorrect answer, we can explain which one's the correct one and why. And if they get the correct answer, we could provide some positive feedback for them. And again, we can add a link to other resources or we could include perhaps a video uh, explaining the answer. Okay, next question is a one mark question. It's a short answer. So once again, if we go to the answer key, I've gone through and I've put some possible answers in there. Okay, and again, I've not selected mark all other answers incorrect. And then I've got some generic feedback here showing the kind of things that students could put within their answer. Again, done. Next one, we've got two uh, possible answers uh, for evidence uh, other than a change in global temperature to show that climate change has taken place. So if I click on reason one, again the answer key, list of possible answers, and then again some generic feedback. And then I've just duplicated that and changed it to reason two for this one. And we can see we've got the same information there. Okay, once more, I've got a long answer text for a four marker here. If we go to the answer key, here's some generic feedback for all the students to give some example answers here. And again, I've indicated the number of points. So the next thing, next question, final section of the paper, I believe. Um, we've got Hurricane Irma. Again, screenshot, insert the image. And then we've included uh, a long answer text here. Um, and I'll put some generic feedback, but I haven't indicated what um, what I'm going to allocate marks for on this one because it, it'd be very difficult really to, to identify some generic um, statements that the students will put because it's highly like they're all going to be very different. Okay, and here we've got a short answer uh, question and again a list of possible answers that the students might type in and then some generic feedback. Okay, and then we've got another one marker here, the same setup. And then here we've got a nine marker uh, plus a three spag question, uh, three spag marks. Now if I click that, all I've done here is I've added just some basic feedback here. This there's going to be more added to this, uh, I think. But I have allocated twelve marks to take in consideration, take into consideration the nine marks for the actual answer then the three spag marks as well. So there's my paper all set up. Okay, if I want to share that with the students, I can either go to send and send it by email, or I can just get the link like so, and I can copy that link. Now, I can also have a look at a preview of the paper. If I click this, then we have got the exam paper that the students will go through and complete. Okay, so they will do that paper and then when they're finished, click submission. And that's it. So in the next video, we will have a look at uh, going through and actually using micro, uh, sorry, Google Forms for assessing uh, the students' answers. One final thing we're gonna do before we share this form with the students is we just need to make little tweak by clicking the one final thing we're going to do to the form before we share it with the students is we're going to capture their email addresses now the reason why I want to capture their email addresses is that once they've completed the exam paper and they've submitted it and then we've gone through and we've marked it and allocated feedback and points and stuff what we want to then do is email the students with their results and with all their feedback. So to do that, we click the little settings um, cog uh, and then if we just select collect email addresses uh, and then that allows us to uh, release
release the marks manually to the students. So if I just click Save here, and then we can see that the email address uh, capture is here at the top of the form. If you found this useful, click the thumbs up and hit the subscribe button.